Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In the previous video of this series, we started working with the chart object and we learned how to add a chart sheet like this one and how to format the chart. We also learned how to copy or delete the chart and we had a look at the chart events. So in this video, we'll learn how to add an embedded chart like this one here. And we'll also see how to format the embedded chart, which is quite similar to what we've seen in the previous video, actually. So let's move to the Visual Basic Editor, and I'm going to insert a module. We have here some modules from the previous video, but we're going to be working here now. And we'll have a macro, I'll call it Embedded Charts, for example. And first of all, we're going to declare a variable, and we can call it, well, that's actually the same we used before, it doesn't matter, we can call it my chart. But important is that now we have to uh, define that as a chart object, while before it was declared as a chart, right? So we're going to be working with the chart object object. And the first thing we'll do is to add an embedded chart. And we can set directly my chart equals to the worksheet, in this case, it's going to be sheet1. We're going to use the, the sheet object name, but it could be active sheet or sheets, or worksheets, uh, the name of the worksheet. Dot chat objects dot add. And here we need to specify where we want to add the chart. In the same way we were doing when adding a shape the left, the top, the width, and the height of the, of the chart. So let's say we want to have it like 150 from the left and 150 from the top, and it's going to be like 250 wide and 150 high, for example. And to add the data to the chart, we need to, again, with my chart. Now, remember, this is now a chart object object. And now we're going to use the chart property of the chart object object which is actually returning the chart object in the embedded chart, so to speak. So we could use it here, or we could actually even put it up here, mychart.chart. And now, the first thing we'll do is to set a chart type. And you can have a look at the chart type enumeration here in my blog. That's Excel macro class. And there are several options. We're just going to go with something simple, as we did before. We're going to use the Excel column cluster a column chart, which is similar to the bar chart, but having the bars vertically. So we're going to come back here, and that's going to be Excel column cluster, that one here. And the next thing we'll do is to set the source data as the data in sheet 1 range a1 through A5. Uh, that's the data right here. That's the same data we used in the previous video. So check the previous video if you haven't seen it yet, because I'm going to go faster through those things that I covered already in the previous video. OK, now if we end the with statement here and we run the macro, we're going to get our uh, embedded chart here. And now we can format that. For example, we may want to change the, the position or the dimensions of the chart. So let me do it down here. Format embedded chart. And we're going to have, again, this here. Uh, so my chart is going to be our, our object variable. And now we need to set my chart equal to sheet one dot chart objects that's important it's not chart it's, it's not chart it's chart objects and here we can either use the name or the index so the name of this chart as you as you see here is chart four and that's the default name the, the first time you add it it's going to be chart one but i've been adding several charts and now it's chart four. Um, we can also, of course, change the name, but um, for now, let's leave it as chart four. And now with my chart, well, one of the things we can do, of course, here is change the names. If you want to rename it to whatever you, you want, work shift or whatever that makes sense to you. And, and then let's have it a bit up is, is kind of down, let's put it at the 20, 
And then I think I'm going to have it bigger, like the width is going to be uh, 350 and the height can be actually 250 or something like that. So we ended with stemming here. Now if I run this other macro here, it's just formatting the chart, we see um, the chart is now bigger, repositioned, and the name is now WorkShift. Now we can format the chart in the same way we did here. We can use exactly the same properties and, and methods to format the chart, right? We can target the, the, the chart title, uh, we can target the legend. So if we wanna do that, um, we can continue here with my chart, but now we're gonna say with my chart dot chart and now is when we can use any of the properties we used earlier right we used in the previous video targeting the chart property of the chart object object so we could for example here uh, say has legend false so we remove the legend then we could say uh, chart title dot text and here we could change the chart title if we want but I think that th that title is fine working uh, hours per shift maybe we can put that and and then we can also target the axis yes as we did before and remember for the horizontal axis we need to use our Excel category and then we can set a title text and it can be for example a working shift okay we can end this with statement here and if I run it oh I get an error here because I didn't because I should have said first that Excel category has title equals true now, if I run it, which I have already done, uh, you see we've got a, a new title here. We've removed the legend and we have a title for the horizontal axis. And we could do many other things. We could add colors, we could format the series. Now, if we want to format the series, uh, we saw already a bit in the previous video, but let me add a new module here uh, and I'll call it format series. So to format the series, and again, we're gonna be using the same variable uh, all the time. So that's my chart. And we're gonna set my chart to um, sheet one chart objects. Remember that chart objects, the embedded chart is always a chart object object. And now with uh, my chart dot chart, now we can target the series collection and we only have one series here and as I explained in the previous video we could have more so then we will have to refer to the index uh, to the corresponding series. Now with series collection we can actually uh, target the, the color so we can change the color of the bar which behaves as a shape actually so we would use uh, format and then field property in the in case it's a line chart we would use format and then line property and if we if we choose line here it will actually target the border of the of the column um, so yeah here we could change the color let me show you how that looks like if we if we said we need to go with RGB and then we have RGB red um, so that's gonna set a border. So so let me just end the with stem in here and show you how that looks like. And that should actually be four colors. So that's that's how we do it with shapes. Yeah. So if I run the macro now, you see we have actually a, a red border around. But we could again we could change the the interior color or the feel um, when we target a shape, and then we get uh, everything red here. And we can do many other things with with the series collection. So if instead of that, I actually target with dot series collection, and I leave this here. We could also, for example, apply data labels. Um, 
That's something I often do. And to do that, we should define a type and the type follows the data labels enumeration. And the one I want to have is data labels show value. So this will show uh, the data labels. Let me end the with statement here. And if we run the macro now, um, yeah, we see, well, we've got it read. And then we have the data labels added here to each column. So that's how we format the series collection, yeah? Now, an embedded chart behaves somehow like a shape. So we can select it and copy or, or, or delete it in the same way we were doing with, with shapes. So let me add another module here and say copy embedded chart. And again, we need to, let me, as a chart object, uh, we have to set my chart as um, sheet one and chart objects and the first one so because we only have one or let's let's find it by its name is work shift that's the the name we changed earlier and now if we want to select it of course that would be as simple as uh, well activate or select once it's selected, we can do many other things. Or uh, sometimes we don't even need to select the chart. So, for example, if we want to copy, we would do simply chart my chart copy. So let's say in sheet two, we are gonna paste it, and we don't have a, a second sheet, but let me just add it here. And as you see now, we've copied that to sheet two. Um, now, if we want to delete that one, we would have to target in sheet two, right? So let me put it in another in another macro. Let's say now, instead of copy, we're gonna call this delete. And just so that you, that's gonna come here. So now my chart is gonna be in sheet two so you see it's exactly the same name but as this is a property of the sheet object you always need to reference the sheet for a for an embedded chart and now with my chart or well we actually do not really need to do that we can delete it yeah if i run this macro you see it's gone okay in the previous video we saw that charts have also events and we saw how to uh, access those events for for a chart sheet coming here to the chart to the chart sheet object module but we cannot do that with embedded charts so if we want to use events with an embedded chart we actually need to create a class so we need to come here and add a class module and let me call this class um, class CLS class uh, embedded chart or something like this empt chart and here we need to declare a public with events chart object as a chart. Now, as you see, we get here, well, we get the class by default always with a class module, but then we get here the chart object. And here on the right, we get the events for a chart. And these are the same events we saw in the previous video for for a chart sheet object, right? We have the activate and the activate event or select. We have the before double click, before right click, and also the mouse events. We've seen a few examples in the previous video. So have a look at the previous video if you want to see that. It is actually at the end of the video. So now to implement this in our embedded chart, we also need to, in a new a standard module so let me add a new module so here we're gonna declare uh, an object and it's gonna be chart event for example as a new CLS uh, embedded chart and see this is exactly the same name we can we find it here because it's exactly the same name of our class module right and now we're gonna have a, a macro to initialize the chart. And for that, we will set the chart event dot 
And as you see, we get here because it has been defined in the class module. So the char object is going to be equal to sheet one char objects uh, one because it's the first one and is the only one. Uh, we could also use the exact name uh, work shift uh, and dot chart. Now, if we run this macro, it has been initialized and now we can actually, now we can use the events in our class module for the uh, embedded chart. So now here, if I say, for example, um, select and note that the project has been reset, so we need to run the initialize macro again. But yeah, whenever we select the, the embedded chart, it's going to show this message. The embedded chart has been selected, right? So let me go back here to the initialize chart um, macro and run it. And now, if we come here and select our chart, you see it's running and it's showing this message box. So we could use any of the other events in the same way. And we've seen how to use the events in the previous video, so I'm not going to go through that again here. But we could use the before right click or before double click uh, event or the mouse events, which can be quite interesting when having an embedded chart. So we've seen how to add embedded charts to a worksheet, how to format the embedded charts, how to copy or delete an embedded chart, and also how to use chart events for an embedded chart. I hope you learned something today and thanks for watching.